football operations. Brady, Brady Woodruff wanted yeah. to take care of you. I ah, appreciate that. I remember I told you, I told someone I saw Brady over at uh, Dudley when I had the Dudley scrimmage. Brady was over there, you and the assistant coaches. Brady is one of our assistant coaches. He is. He's, he's, he gets some work done he had a, In fact, I think he might have had like a, maybe like a clipboard or some paper with him that night over there. He was writing for us. Yeah, that's good stuff. How old is Brady? Brady, how old are you? Twelve. It's a talk to the microphone. How old are you? Twelve. What, so. uh, now, he works with the team, kind of like the offensive coordinator in some ways? Well, I mean, he'd probably tell you he was the offensive coordinator. He's really the director of football operations. Operation. That's a good title to have, yeah, yeah. But, you know, he also plays quarterback for our Stokesdale football team, so. What's that Stokesdale football team's nickname? We're the Revolution. Revolution, that's a good one, too, because I've not heard that. I mean, so many times guys will grab a nickname that's been used other places, just kind of toss them around. Yeah. That one's very original there. Yes, it is. We're, uh, we're real proud of what we've been able to accomplish up there. And uh, Brady, is he quarterback uh, for the team? He does play quarterback. Yeah, that's I thought he might be the leader back there. He threw a couple touchdowns. He actually threw a touchdown over there to Robert Dix. Was his tight end, Christian's little brother. Yeah. Threw a touchdown in the game Saturday. And uh, one of your players here tonight, your offensive lineman, Sean Clark, he mm -hmm. also helps with that team. Sean helps coach us, and his dad helps coach us as well. So it's a good uh, it's a good little feeder program for us. It's a good conversion, too, because those uh, guys in your Revolution team also work out at Northwest, then, right? Yeah, we've been practicing at Northwest, and... Um, and they run a modified version of our offense and defense, so it's a nice little transition up to the middle school and then up to the high school ranks. What does Brady do in the offseason? I mean, does he have like an offseason training program too? <laughs> you know, he's going to be busy with you guys when his season ends being the yeah. director of operations. Has he got any kind of training program he's into? I tell you what, he's, he's a little bit young for the weightlifting stuff, but that's going to probably be starting up the weightlifting and the speed stuff and all that stuff, I would imagine. Has he got any other sports he's involved in too? No, he's a, just a football man. He plays a lot of football for us. But. What is the difference? I thought about this question from Coach Woodruff today. What's the difference between, or is there any difference between Michigan football and North Carolina football? Well, that's a great question. Um, I can be in North Carolina, I can tell you that uh, the players down here are a lot faster. Ironically, we were just uh, we were just watching before we got here. I was, we were showing Brady. Coach Ole, who's one of our coaches, actually played for me up in Michigan. So some of the coaches were giving him a hard time. We busted out some old game film of Coach Ole making running around, making tackles. And, yeah, obviously we were seeing how good of a football player he was. But the funny thing was all our coaches were like, man, y'all were slow. <laughs> and mm. That's something you do notice quite a bit. But, um, you know, it, it's with the weather, the elements. And, I mean, these 30-degree nights, that's oh, yeah. commonplace up there. So, Well, the guys up in Michigan, I guess, are indoors a lot more with the colder weather. Does that mean they're in the weight room, maybe hitting the waist bigger, stronger type guys? More you know, I, I don't know. i got to be honest with you. I mean, I, I've coached in North Carolina. I've coached in Florida. And I've I remember you mentioned in, Florida you back know, in the I've, day, yeah. Um, Coach in Michigan, I can tell you the players in North Carolina are uh, as good as anybody I've seen. They're they're fast and they get after it. And I think the year-round football thing really helps out down here. Do you think maybe when you came here as a head coach for Northwest, you were kind of thinking about North Carolina as a basketball type area? All of a sudden, this football because we were talking about with some of your players. The right. fact you got guys that are moving on to the next level now. You got the DJ Reader. We can see him on TV. We can see a TJ Logan. We were watching Eric Ebron here last week. Absolutely. I mean, the list goes on and on. Well, I've always said the quality of you know the quality. Of football that's played in North Carolina is uh, one of the best kept secrets in America. All the, And even in our area, all the college coaches that run through, I keep telling them, you know, you need to... You, know, you need to really take a serious look at the Greensboro area, and even the coaches from Michigan that I know, I still say, you know, you need to make a, come down and make a trip because, you know, the Division II type of kid, we really don't have a lot of Division II options per se in North Carolina, much like in other, you know, parts of the, and you know, parts of the country where the Division One kids are not going to get missed, but really those Division Two kids around here are really talented football players. And you look at Winston Salem. I was going to say a guy who's tapped into that Connell Maynard has just turned that into a look. Yeah. at winston Salem State. And, I mean, he just cleans up Winston-Salem and Greensboro, and, and then you go down to Charlotte. Yeah, because I had a guy last year, a man contacted me out of Tennessee. Had a kid up there used to live here, moved to Tennessee, was trying to get back here to play college football, and I connected him with Winston-Salem State because he wanted to go to A&T, but they said nothing available there then. So I'm going to try Winston-Salem State. He talked with them, and they were saying, well, we'll take a look at the guy's film, but we have to say it straight up. We recruit North Carolina primarily first. That's our first choice. Absolutely. And, and, and he's very smart by doing it because a lot of times college coaches are literally about taking 
the further you go away from the university, the harder it is for the kid to be able to succeed there at college. And that's why you you know you typically don't see USC and Oregon and some of those schools. That's why when those when those kids from Northern traveled across the country, it really highly unusual. It was very unusual for that to happen. Yeah, and you think about uh, they'll say at times you want to get away from home, but there's uh, you can go a little closer to home and still get away from home. Oh, absolutely. I told out to Matt Pulowski when he's at Greensboro. I said, right, at Oak there and you know, go for college. I said, when you're 15 minutes away from home, your parents aren't going to come visit you, but it is nice that you can go home on the weekends and you still know people. And yeah, especially when you have like that off day. You want to take and take a little break on the off day, go watch a high school game somewhere. It's a lot different going from trying to come from California back here than going to say go for college out around your old community. Without a doubt. And you got to be happy about Pulaski too. To be, I think they're three and zero now in the ODAC. I mean, that's unreal for Guilford College. Yeah. You tell that to somebody a few years back, Guilford's three and zero. They say you, you got the wrong Guilford. I mean, right. it's unreal what they're doing. Matt's a very special football player, and uh, you know we 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 valued Matt when he was at Northwest. That he was, I, I I say over and over that you know Matt when he walked into our football program was maybe my first or second year, and you know we hadn't really. Northwest hadn't really accomplished a whole lot in football, and, and Matt was really the first quarterback that we had that really took it on his shoulders, and, and he's been part of a building program with us and building over there at Guilford, and you just knew he was going to be able to do that for him. Yeah, and you follow teams over the years. There are always games. You remember a certain kid in a certain situation, a certain game. That's still kind of the uh, memorable game for Matt Pulaski. I still won't forget that Ragsdale game that year when you guys played them that last right. drive of the game to get it to the end zone to win that game. I mean, he took it on down the field. You know, Matt, that's a, that was a quintessential game for Matt in that, you know, Matt was always willing to do whatever he had to do to help the team win. He was one of the most unselfish kids I've ever been around, which is difficult when you have a skilled position player to, to get them to be unselfish. But, I mean, he won that game with his feet that day. I mean, he ran for first down after first down. And then, you know, a couple weeks later, we played Richmond County in the playoffs. And, and that might be the best game that I've ever had a quarterback. And he managed that game as good as it could be managed because when you when you think about quarterbacks and that's one of the things we try to do even at the Stokesdale team I coach you know a lot of that you know is running plays when you check in and out of plays from from a, a fan standpoint it's just another running play but you don't understand that the quarterback was given two or three plays to check to and he picked the right one mm -hmm. and that's one of those things that you know like I said we, we try to instill with with our young kids even we let you know, we even let Brady call a bunch of plays down there just because if you can do that, that's such an advantage. You think about Matt's game, we'll get back to the Northwest current season now, but that was kind of a signature game for him, the Richmond County game and the Ragsdale game, but also the running that Northwest did when he was over there actually helped prep him for what he's doing at Guilford. Because remember, not as much maybe this year because they've got a running back at Guilford maybe carrying some more load this season. Sure. A lot of games last year, I think Matt was actually having maybe a 100-yard game or two as a running quarterback. You know, Matt, as a quarterback, one of the things that I always found unique about him was he always had the ability to run and scramble, but he never took a bad hit. That's smart, yeah. I mean, it was right before somebody sized him up and he said he's going to get hit. He would just, he'd turn his body a certain way and it would kind of glance off him and it was just an uncanny ability not to get hit. And that was something that, uh, you know, obviously when I've watched Matt play over in Guilford, he's, he's, he's got all that. That's what I was worried about him in the first few games watching him play for Guilford about maybe taking one of those crazy hits. But like you say, knowing how to get in there and how to turn your body makes a big difference. Talk about the turning point for this Northwest Guilford team. Was there a turning point this season, or did you guys just kind of turn the keys back in August when you started and everything just went right the whole way? Well, I, I don't think anything always goes right the whole way, but um, we've, we've got a very special group of kids. Um, the team chemistry is really second to, second to none from what I've seen. Uh, we're incredibly focused, incredibly disciplined. I think, if anything, uh, we really set the tone with the kids' effort in the summer in the weight room. I mean, it was. Was there, there was some things going on in that weight room that you know I was a thought you know I was afraid we might get arrested for because there was screaming and mm -hmm. pain and all that going on in the weight room. But I tell you what, it really pays off. You think about it too. That's something the players you had here tonight mentioned. The fact there's so much team involved in this current group. They play like a team. There's no individualism. I mean, they want to do it together like the family. We hear that so many times. But this year, the, the record proves that's correct. Well, and that's something that we, you know, you always preach family and family and family. You got to remember that a lot of times these kids come from, you know, dysfunctional families. A lot of times, so they say family, but they really don't know what they mean. I really believe that this kid, no, this group of kids, understands the idea of family. And and like I 
I said, I, I just, it's been very happy for me because being an old kind of Michigan, Bo Schembacher kind of guy where he would say, we don't have superstars because we don't have room on our team for superstars. We just want a bunch of, you know, good, solid kids. And that's what we preach. And, you know, it's been good this year. Since they're gone now, the guys have left out of here. Maybe they'll hear this later. But talk about the guys you had that Mark Murphy. What Mark has meant to this team this year? Oh, I mean, Mark is, uh, as, as far as a football player, I, I was joking with our coaching staff that he may be smarter than most of our coaches, and, and none of them disagreed with us. He's such an intelligent football player. He's just an intelligent kid, very well spoken. He's the kind of kid that just sees things. He'll make checks on our defense and say, Coach, you know, we call stealth, you know, strong stealth zebra to the field, but they lined up with trips into the boundary. You mind if I check it through a C gap blitz? And you're like, Mark, go right ahead. Mark's buddy. talking all that to you guys. Mark huh? is, wow. I mean, there was things he even caught one of our defensive coaches the other day. He checked to a coverage defensive coach was going to jump down his throat, and I said, whoa, 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 Mark's right. <laughs> because of it, and it's, he really brings that element to the team for he us. He looks like a young guy, too, who still has a lot more that he can do down the road. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Mark. I mean, Mark's only a junior. He's yeah. been on varsity since he was a freshman. He's a really good running back. He's really good at running the football. I mean, he scored some touchdowns this year for us. Um, and he's a very skilled player for us. What about that little Kevin Henry? He was kind of down in his chair. I didn't know he was quite. You said six feet. I said, this kid, when he stood up, I saw he was six feet. But he's been a good addition to your team, too. Again, Kevin was when I, you know, when I, you know, you, you bring Mark here because he is so intelligent, and that's one of the things we value at Northwest is intelligence and being smart. And then you take a kid like, you know, Kevin that comes in. He's a transfer into the school. You know, Kevin brings a certain amount of discipline in that when he came in, he hadn't played football in a couple years. And we put him at defensive back, and everything we've asked him to do, every technique, every every everything he has done to the letter just perfectly and that's a great illustration of he is he is one of the best defensive backs that we've seen all year man uh, for us as a corner I mean he's a special football player. He's got to label that like good find that's a good find right there to get a kid like that and get and, him in there. And, and you know those are the kind of kids that normally we have to develop at Northwest to have one dropped in our lap was just extra special for us. And he's only a junior too so you can actually absolutely. reap some benefits from his. Oh, absolutely and, and you know he's another kid that has such an upside on the offensive side of the ball as well. As a receiver. And when we have him in the offseason and actually learning some routes and doing some things, you know, we expect some great things for him as well next year on the how about, offense. How about this kid, Sean Clark? He's in taking German four, so you know this kid's intelligent quota's got to be up there pretty good to be able to bring – you can't buffalo the German teacher when you bring your work in. He's got to have his stuff together. No, you know, Sean's another one of those things that he's one of those great examples of what we value at Northwest, which is just the hard work. When Sean came in, I mean, he didn't start as a freshman, as a sophomore, as a junior for us. And and, and, and that's unique that he got in the weight room and he worked extra hard and he got stronger and he did all those kind of things that you asked him to do and he just waited his turn. And, you know, now he's starting as a strong side tackle. And, you know, the best thing I'll tell you about Sean Clark is not that, you know, his dad was a legacy and was a player at our team, was an award winner back in the 80s. It was that Sean's the kind of kid that if you're playing against him, you may beat him, but, but you're going to have to kill that kid in order to get him to quit. And that's one of the other things we value at our school. Tell you, he's, uh, and you get a guy like that, too, to make the start of life his senior year. So many times coaches are looking not only at this year, they're looking down the road a little bit, too. They're looking sometimes at a sophomore or a junior Absolutely. maybe for that spot because they've not only built for now, they got to build for the future. To get that spot, you're very last year, not started before. That says a lot also. Absolutely. What about uh, you kind of break things down with Christian Dix? Boy, I, again, Christian is one of those other kind of kids, too, that um, you know, as coaches, you're not supposed to have favorites. Just sit back and listen to him to talk. And he starts talking, and this kid is interesting, and he's got a lot of passion. You talked about that passion and the way this kid can uh, communicate. Very good communicator, too. Christian is, without a doubt, if my son grew up to be like him, I would be so happy. He is such a nice, sincere, when you you know, when you always talk about the old Eddie Haskell kid from Leave it to Beaver, the kind of kid that, you know, yes sir, no sir, and then behind the scenes they're really kind of a, a character. Yeah. Christian is that sweet and sincere. Every place he goes, everybody you meet, and he is such an intense football player. And again, he was a kid that's been playing with us since he was a freshman as well. And he kind of worked his way. He's, he mentioned at Kernodal, he played in the seventh grade, played in the eighth grade. So in the eighth grade, he didn't even play very much. But he gets to Northwest as a freshman. Boom, he's in there. And you know, that's one of the things that when you look at you know the amount of work we try to do with our middle school theater programs and youth levels is that kind of stuff happens and that's why I'm so adamant about not cutting at the middle school and letting all the kids play and giving them opportunities because you know, 
you take a kid like Christian Dix, thank God that Christian Dix didn't give up on football. Mm -hmm. He just grew probably a little bit late. He came in as a freshman. And, you know, when you walk in as a freshman, that's everything, you know, you start with a clean slate, and he's a perfect example of it. Like I said, he lettered as a freshman for us and didn't get on the field a whole lot as an eighth grade kid. So you figure that one out. And he was talking, too. He's got that genuineness you mentioned, very genuine. And he talks so well and, you know, so well spoken about not only his teammates, but the other guys he plays against, the guys he's gone against during the time at Northwest. Again, Christian is one of those kids that uh, I, I always joke with him. I wish he was a couple years younger and could date my daughter because he is that great of a kid, as well as a lot of our kids are. I mean, you know, our kids at Northwest, we're blessed to have the kids that we have, and he's just very representative of the quality of kids we have. Any outside chance uh, he might be able to get a little football playing time in in college, or do you think he just goes all baseball? Well, you know, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I would think Coach Persley over there at yeah, Rivard, um, the same thing. with what they're doing, and, you know, Christian's one of those kids that he has so many intangibles, you can't go wrong, and, and you know, he's got so many intangibles, he's going to be a success in whatever he chooses to do. He would be a great fit for them. And you mentioned Coach Persley. When we talk about Brady, I'm thinking about Brock Persley, Coach Persley's sure. son. Helped his dad when he was a kid, wore the little cap, had the clipboard, <laughs> saw him on the sideline. He was probably 8, 9, 10 years old. Right. Then you get uh, Coach Luce Moore, his son, Joey. Right. I mean, uh, you got Coach Persley's son of it. Brevard now is an assistant college coach. You got Joey Luce Moore, Coach Luce Moore's son. Tommy graduate Norwood. assistant up at uh, Western Carolina, Coach Norwood's son yep. at Appalachian. Then you got, uh, there's a Coach Kirby at Eastern Alabama. I think his son also is like a graduate mm -hmm. Appalachian. I mean, this seems to fall into place. And, uh, you hear that, Brady? It all come together <laughs> one day. Yeah. And um, the thing nowadays, I meet these high school assistant coaches these days, and sometimes these days the thoughts are changing, which kind of rings home good for me. These guys are the only thinking nowadays. I mean, a young college, I mean, a young high school assistant coach, they'll say, "What about the future? I want to be a college coach one day." I think more and more kids are kind of looking in that absolutely. direction. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that you always have to make your decision about, and I always, you know, I've got a number of ex players at Northwest that are looking in that direction. We've got a kid that's essentially a grad, uh, um, uh, Coach Groves' grandson. You Reed Ferguson. Coach Groves, Reed Ferguson yeah, is. Yeah. He's up helping out at App State, and he, mm -hmm. you know, we have uh, Nate Purdue who was helping out with Greensboro College, and the one thing I told them was just my one suggestion that if you get into education, if you want to try the college thing, you really need to try it right when you're yeah. out of college yeah. because once you're in the high school ranks, it's it's difficult from an economic standpoint, and it's difficult from a uh, you know from a moving around thing. My wife's always asked me about coaching college football, and I, you know I can't take the pay cut, and you really want to move every two years, mm. and you want to eat dorm food, and yeah, when your head coach loses his job, the whole staff they've got to uproot and move again. Yeah, and that's a, you know I've got a number of my you know when I was growing up, and I was you know a, a twenty year old assistant or whatnot, I had a bunch of friends of mine that were out of work every Christmas, and they were great coaches. They just were on the wrong staff. Exactly. What about our buddy Matt Sugg? Is it Matt Sugg? Matt Sugg. Helping you guys out. Oh, Matt does a great job, and it's, it's great because, you know, that's one of the things that when you look at what you're proud of, I get really, really proud when ex-players want to come back and help out. And I look at a coach like Steve Oley, who played for me up in Michigan, who's been with me for, I think, 15 out of 15 or 16 out of my 19 years as a head coach and here's a guy that played for me coached with me in Michigan went down to North Carolina he's been with me every year since we've been here you know Matt Sugg is the next player at Northwest he comes back and helps out that really speaks well of that these kids had great experiences when they were with the program and they want to come back and that's something we're very proud of is it surprising where you're at right now I mean eight no now after picking up the win and overall in the conference haven't lost a game I mean you did lose some players off last year's team. Any surprises the way things have gone this season? Or uh, when you looked at the team beginning year, do you think maybe we could have been here? Well, I mean, I, I, I think obviously every year you're supposed to, you know, we always like to think we could be there because, you know, we have had a lot of success over the last years. Just the uh, statistical probability of playing the caliber of teams we play and then being able to not screw it up. And, uh, you know, obviously we lost that Northern game and we, we fully understand that. Um, you know, and that was a game that we didn't feel like we played up to our potential in the second half. But even games like, you know, the Reagan game, we win that in the last minute out of safety. Mm -hmm. The High Point Central game, we did our best to give that ball game away and by some sheer luck, happenstance, bad karma for High Point Central, I don't know what it was. You know, we recover a fumble in the end zone when the best player and probably the county are, arguably, uh, fumbles the ball after just obliterating us the whole Sometimes night. Sometimes we've been playing 
well, sometimes those breaks tend to go your way a little bit too. You know, there's been many years where I thought maybe there was an Indian burial ground underneath <laughs> us and, you know, there was some bad spirits. Yeah. And then you have years like this where it's you're afraid you're using up all nine of your lives. Right. I guess that's just the, the sports you're playing. What about down? I mean, we hate to look down the road because you got Glenn tomorrow night, sure. but just kind of hypothetical. This is good. We'll just put this in hypothetical sure. terms, not reality terms. Hypothetically speaking, would it be better to meet a team in the first round of the playoffs, a team from down near Richmond County or a team from over and down near Charlotte? Which would be a better scenario? Well, you know, when you play 4 AA football in North Carolina, that's one of tough. the things that yeah. I always I always talk to my friends from Michigan. I always try to explain to them, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find teams up in Michigan that I can compare to the teams we play in the playoffs. And I said, just imagine, you know, I'll take one of the teams up there and I'll say, we got like eight of those teams down here and we've got to get through all of them in the 4 AA. You know, who we play, we recognize that with the teams we play in the regular season, we play very quality opponents. Our big concern is obviously trying to position ourselves in a situation where those other teams have to come to our old building stadium and play us at our house. Because right. we went to Richmond County for four years and Charlotte Independence and, you know, over to Page. And, and, you know, talking to Kevin over at Page, he'll tell you that, you know, one of the most instrumental parts of their state championship mm. the other couple years ago was the fact that everyone had to come to Greensboro. Butler had to come there. Mallard Creek had to come there. That was huge. Yeah. And, I, and I think, yeah. you, know, I, you know, obviously we understand James Summers and that team that was surrounding them were very special. But when you got to travel a couple hours, that's, that's right. worth points. That's and, right. yes. and some of those teams down around the Charlotte area may surprise people this year, too, because Matthews Butler is now 6-3. and three. They could be looking in the end, maybe much better than a 6-3 and three team now. But you got teams like this Cornelius Huff has stepped up. This Rocky River team had just beat Butler last week. Sure. Some new teams are kind of surfacing down there, too. Well, I think from what from talking to coaches, I know down there there's certainly a consistency issue with a lot of those teams. You take a team like Butler, and, and, and obviously they're the odds-on favorite every year to be up in the running. And they've, you know, they've dropped a couple games along the way that they probably would like to have back. And, um, you know, Charlotte Independence that we played last year in the playoffs and lost the dogfight to, they returned down near their whole team. Yeah. We thought, and they're, you know, I think they've got three losses already. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think it's one of those ones when you're playing quality opponents, you don't really look at the losses, but it isn't lost on us that if we can get some of these teams to come up and play us, that certainly should feed us. Because we beat Scotland County a couple years ago, and, you know, quite frankly, they were significantly better than us, but I think they were asleep in the first half and allowed us to be in the ball game and have a lead, and, you know, that was that team that ended up walking away with the state championship they sure the next did year. The next year, uh, 4A team, it just, some people felt like they could have beaten the four double A champion. I, I feel very comfortable that that because we saw them on film that year. They were one of the most dominant high school teams I've seen, and you know it, it was kind of funny because I talked a lot of smack for a lot of years. Hey, we're the last team that beat mm -hmm. Scotland County. We're the last team that beat you know you know how, however it went to, and and um, it was it was kind of fun to be able to say that. But uh, I didn't go out and schedule them that next year because sure. they were pretty doggone good. What would it mean? I asked the players about this. Another hypothetical situation goes always dreaming. People in sports, sure. I think, dream a lot. What would it mean to be practicing football on Thanksgiving morning? I, I tell you what, that would be, um, you know, again, coming from Michigan, I mean, Michigan, their season's so much shorter. They're, uh, you know, if you're playing on Thanksgiving weekend, you're playing, the state, they're playing the state championship. So, you know, it's funny. I talked to all my friends up there, and, and their season ends tomorrow night, and I'm like, we still got another two weeks of the regular season plus. Um, you know, I... I, I guess you always dream about playing on Thanksgiving and, uh, you know, being able to practice there. I, I think there would be some logistical things. I'd have to try to figure out how you work through that. But, you know, we're having such a good time with our kids. Our coaches were talking about it yesterday that we're laughing at practice. And one of my coaches who used to coach at Reagan said, isn't it great? We're nine weeks into the season. We're still laughing and having fun at practice. Oh, yeah. and, and, you know, again, but that's really a testament to our kids and our community because, boy, they make it fun. What about Glenn? Let's focus on that game tomorrow night. What's going to be the factor for Northwest Gilford? for going to that game tomorrow night to make sure you get the win and you don't run into some trap games. You know, you've got Easter Scythe down the road. They're looming in the future, but Glenn is here on the map right now. Well, I, you know, I think the thing that that, that really has placed our advantage is that our kids are, I think we're so focused right now. I haven't heard one kid talk about any game down the road other than Glenn. And and one of our coaches says, is it just they're that focused or they're just that out of touch? And I said, I really think they're that focused, that we're focused on Glenn right now, we understand 
kind of what the the end was. You know, the goal is obviously to win the league championship and have home field in the playoffs. That's our focus right now. And you know, Glenn is a dangerous opponent because they do have a lot of speed on offense. They've got a, a very good defense. They played. You know, they only lost to Reagan by seven. They played East Forsyth very tough. Um, they played Carver very tough. And these are three very good teams. That's right. Yeah, Car now, Carver has really done well this year. They're, they're really flying yeah. under the radar. And you know, Glenn has has played within a touchdown or two at, at different. You know, going in the fourth quarter with all three of these teams. So we understand that, you know, uh, they're going to be very focused. They're, they have an outside chance at a playoff. they got three wins. Mm. So, um, you know, they've got us left, and I believe they've got Ragsdale left, and maybe uh, uh, maybe High Point Central. So, you know, they know that they've got to try to steal a win or two down the road to get into the playoffs. And, um, you know, that actually is the last JV team that's beaten us. Really? The last team beat you guys? Last year's Glenn, Glenn team was. And those guys on the varsity this year, so you've seen yeah. them before. So we're, you know, like I said, we're, we're very uh, – in tune with what Coach Payne over there is doing, and and, and uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. They're trying to run some wing T stuff, so it was mm -hmm. it was the wing uh, T starting to spread around a little bit, isn't it? Well, you know, it is kind of funny. That was one of the things that I think that's a little niche we have in our area, and that um, you know it fits our kids, it fits what we want to do. Everybody wants to do the you know this offense and that offense, and you know it is kind of funny that we're you know we're racking up 40 points or so a game mm -hmm. doing what we do. Um, do you get anybody inquiring in the all season? All the other, time. How do you work this thing? Get some all the questions. Time. Yeah, yeah. All the time. And, and you know, more importantly, I get hmm. you know I get asked to speak all around the place about how to install it and how to defend it. And it's always kind of funny when you ask how to defend it because you know, you know, there are some tricks to it. There's not really a teams. And I always say this: teams get into trouble when they try to run a special defense on us right. because invariably we. We know how to run our offense. We don't change. If you said you ran a 6-2 or a 5-2 or a 5-3, we're going to run it regardless. If you try to put a new defense in in three days, you do, you go ahead and try that. We're practicing our offense versus every defense, and it usually works out that way. So, um, you know, there, there, there are some tricks, which was kind of fun at practice this week because the kids were like, I'm like, all right, guys. You're going against their own team. Office, I said, yeah. straight up, now here's some things we can do that gives us fits that makes them kind of say we have to do this, that. And you could actually see a 6-2 because those guys would be cramping the line trying to get players up there to try to stop that run. Well, and that's always one of the funny things when Coach Ole and I, because we've been coaching together for so long, you know, we'll see something and, and you know, I, I, I call the defense and he calls the offense. So he'll come over to me and say, you know, Kent City 2002. I'm like, okay, and I know exactly the game that he's talking about and the defense they ran. And, you know, every now and then we see something we haven't seen before. But, you know, for the most part, when you do something for 17 years, you should be pretty – if you were changing oil on a car for 17 years, you should be pretty good at it by now. Right. And, and, boy, he sure is. Um, are there variations of the wing tee? Are there some formations that are clumped and tighter? Are others that are more spread out? There are a million different <laughs> formations, and we do so many different things out of it. Um, and, you know, the wing tee is kind of a – it gets a bad moniker a lot of times because it's a running offense. And, you know, you take a kid like Matt Pulowski, he ran it, and uh, all, all he did was throw for, you know, 1,000, 1,500 yards every year. Mm -hmm. There were years where he where he was the second leading passer in the area behind a kid from High Point. Exactly, yeah. Um, so, you know, so it, it, it really is a very multiple offense, but it's an offense that you have to be very disciplined at to be able to run. Got to let you guys get going pretty soon. Got that JV game tonight going on, yep. I guess, at your place. And closing questions, how many teams from your conference will make the playoffs? Any idea? You know, got to be honest with you, we have one coach on our staff, Coach Beal, and that's kind of his job is to okay. be, the pay, the, be the playoff prognosticator. Yeah. Um, I would have imagined for sure the top three teams. Yeah, we're thinking right guaranteed those top three. The guaranteed three teams, obviously, East for Scythe, Austin, High Point, which, you know, um, you know, this conference has been shared, I think, three out of the last four years. Yeah. So that's certainly in play this year, and, and that's we're going to be have to be on our game these next three weeks to make sure that doesn't happen. But I would definitely think that, and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if a Ragsdale team. Because I was about a fourth team. Yeah, yeah I yeah. would imagine a fourth team will probably make it, and potentially a fourth team out of the, you know, that's out right. of uh, this, the Southeast Dudley Page Conference right. as well, I would imagine. What's been, uh, we'll close it with this, what's been uh, the best or maybe a couple of series of plays that Brady has called this year? Brady, what do you think, man? So how do you check with me? He runs a uh, 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 sweep, sweep check with me where he comes in a line of scrimmage and he uh, calls a sweep play to wherever they're the weakest. And 
he does that. I, you know, I tell you what, he threw a he, he he threw a nice touchdown in the game this last Saturday, and um, yeah, we've been real happy with how how he's been progressing, how all the kids have been yeah. progressing. Does he come up to the line like uh, Peyton Manning and he'd <laughs> check off and start pointing and doing all those things yet? <laughs> if he came out and started pointing off free safeties, I don't I don't think he would. Uh, I don't think he'd ever live that one down. He'd be kind of brutal around our coaching office, I think, because he's just. He's one of the guys in the coach's office, which is kind of a unique situation to have a seventh grade kid sitting in there sure. with a bunch of adults. But, um, you know, it's a very special thing we have at Northwest, and, and, and it's a great environment to have a, a son be around, and I'm very blessed to have him be around the adults that he's around on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, Coach, you've turned that program around. We talked about that many times before. Keep up the good work. Wish you luck in that game against Glenn tomorrow night, and I know you've got to get back to some work now. We'll let you get rolling. Thanks for bringing those guys, and always enjoy talking to those guys. Not sure who we're going to get each time when you bring them in, but we get these kids in here. We start talking to these guys. Outstanding. Thank you very much. We're very proud of them and all our kids at Northwest. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Brady, thank you, my man. Thank you. We'll look for that uh, revolution team to keep uh, rolling along too, we'll Coach. on that one. We've got a lot of work to do on that. Hey. Talk to you. Thank you, Coach Woodruff.